Hello everyone and welcome to my balcony garden. In today's video I'm going to be planting snakehead fritillary bulbs into pots. Actually just one pot at the moment, this one here. I love that name, isn't it so evocative and a bit badass as well. I recently did a video on how to plant hyacinth bulbs into pots. I will link it above, you can check out if you're interested and maybe even plant them and bless your nostrils with their unbelievable scent in spring. Other than that, let's get started. Fertilities, they're just fabulous. Flowers, spring flowering bulbs, they are ornamental. They're so striking and they're very exotic looking. They're late spring flowering bulbs and they are in the lily family, Liliaceae. They're native to Europe and West Asia and are actually endangered in some areas, although in cultivation, they're readily available, bulbs to buy, it's not hard to buy them, there's loads of different varieties as well and we are starting to see them more and more in gardens. They flower from around March, April to May, even into June and they're commonly found in floodlands and damp meadows in the wild which gives us a clue as to what these bulbs like and what they don't like. Because as ever, if we want to give our plants the best chance of growing, we just need to replicate their natural environment. That's, it's really as simple as that. The colours come in purple, maybe even a kind of burgundy colour. They also come in pure white. And they have this really distinctive checkered pattern on the flowers. They'll grow to about 15 to 40 centimetres high. And they're very versatile. We see them in meadows, woodlands, and as I mentioned before, we're seeing them a lot now in gardens. So the best time to plant them is from September until October, maybe into November. I am in the end of October now, so not got much time. Let's get started. So we start with healthy fertility bulbs. Do not be fooled by these weird looking bulbs. They kind of, I was really surprised when I first saw them a while ago. They looked sort of like off mushrooms, you know, you find in the back of your fridge and you're like, oh my god, that's what that smell was. But don't worry about it, as long as you don't see any signs of mould and the bulbs are nice and firm when you squeeze them, so that's a really nice tough one there. Um, you should be fine, there should be no problems with planting those bulbs. They do contain um, a poisonous alkaloid, so if you do have sensitive skin, I would maybe recommend wearing gloves when you're working with them. These funny looking bulbs like to sit in the soil at around 10 centimetres or 4 inches. So as ever, as I explain in all my bulb videos, this is going to determine what size of pot I am going to choose to plant them in. So this is the pot I'm going to be planting them in. This is the terracotta pot and it's about 17 centimetres deep. And this is actually a really good height for the purpose of this video, so planting these fertility bulbs. Um, I'm planting the fertility bulbs about 10 centimetres deep in the soil, but I also I need to leave a space at the bottom here so that the, the, bulb, the roots that are going to come out of the bulbs can go here, you know, so they have a little bit of space and that uh, the roots allow them to take up, you know, water and nutrients and the roots help the bulbs to establish. The pot I'm using today is terracotta. I use terracotta for all my bulbs. I've had really no problems with it at all. Um, terracotta is porous so it allows water to pass through the sides of the pots and keeping the soil at a really you know moist but not saturated um, moisture level because if bulbs are sitting in water for any period of time then they could rot and they might die. So make sure that your pot has a hole at the bottom and um, this is again to improve drainage, allow drainage to happen. You can cover this with sort of broken crockery or something like that and um, this is going to help the soil stop falling out of it. I just to be honest I don't bother that much um, but again it's up to you. So I am going to fill my pot with a nice, good quality, multi-purpose compost and I'm just firming down very gently. I'm going to fill it to about uh, 10 centimetres deep because, as we know, that's where fertility, uh, snakehead fertility sorry, like to sit. There is a top and a bottom to fertility bulbs. This is the top and where the roots are, roots are coming out is the bottom. We're going to place this on the bottom. So let's do it. So I'll just pop my first snakehead bulb in. 
making sure that it's not touching the side of the pot. Snake heads like to sit around to eight to ten centimeters apart in the soil, um, which is again of like three four inches. I am packing them in a little bit closer than that though, so I would say it's probably maybe five centimeters under. I want a full display this year, so I am putting them probably closer than they should be. But as I always mention, and, all, and as I found out, you can get away with putting bulbs in in tighter. Um, one of my subscribers asked me, I think it's Storosaurus Rex. Uh, he asked me a really interesting question, why you can pack bulbs in closely into pots when actually in the open soil, it would be better to leave them apart. I don't n know the answer, so if anybody does, please leave a comment below and shout out to you, Rex, I'll put your name at the bottom. Um, thanks for that really cool, really good question. I'm happy with the bulb position, very odd looking things, but yep, happy with that. Now I'm just gonna backfill. What I actually forgot to mention about the soil is that normally when I'm growing bulbs in pots, I mix in sand and grit uh, into this multi-purpose compost because I really want the soil to be nice and free draining. This time, however, I'm not doing that because as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, Snakeheads are native to floodlands and also to woodlands. So you can imagine that they really like moisture um, and they're gonna respond really well to a nice moist, but also free draining soil. So I'm leaving out the mixing grit part. There's a few bits here and there, but this is from my old mix. Just ignore them. Just firming it down nice and gently until it's about an inch from the top. We want the level of soil to allow for water to be poured onto, but not that it overflows everywhere. Because then it's just messy. Once you're done, I really encourage using labels. It's going to tell you what is in there because if you're like me and you're planting a jillion bulbs, you forget which one's which. So that is the planting process finished. Now I am going to give this pot a huge drink. I really want to soak it to where the water reaches the bulbs. The water is going to trigger the bulbs into putting down roots, establishing themselves. And of course, that means that they're going to flower better or, you know, flower at all in spring. Positioning, I am going to put this actually in a colder part of my balcony because uh, snakehead fritillaries really love cold, damp conditions. So normally I would put them here with the rest of my bulbs. This is where I receive full sun on my balcony, but I'm actually gonna pop it in that corner there. So yeah, I would recommend putting it in a cold, dark, uh, sorry, damp area in your growing space. And over winter, I would just allow the winter weather to water it, make sure that the soil remains moist but never saturated and if you do see that the soil is getting a bit dry I would water it so maybe just keep an eye on it, keeping them watered once a week. And other than that we just wait until spring. Thank you so much for watching the video, I hope it helped you. If you enjoyed it give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to support it. I hope you're all staying safe and well. I send you all my good wishes and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.